Hello all, you join me from Little Venice, which, as the name suggests, is a canal way that runs through the west end of central London, that contains a large variety of bars, restaurants and shops. But I'm not here to talk about that today. Today, I'm at Paddington Station, where I'm looking to solve the long-running dispute of which rail operator is best to travel with to Heathrow Airport, Heathrow Express or TfL Rail. So, without further ado, let's head to the platform and see what we're in for. We do have rather limited time before our service departs today, however we do have time to admire the 1854 roof that accompanies the station, as well as look at a few trains. There are two main rail operators between London Paddington and Heathrow Airport, the first being Heathrow Express. Heathrow Express is the most well known and well used operator on the route, running approximately every 30 minutes between London Paddington and Heathrow Airport non-stop, the first stop being Heathrow Central for terminals 2 and 3. Then we have TfL Rail, which is the precursor as to what will eventually become the Elizabeth Line later in the first half of 2022, which will connect Abbey Wood and Shenfield in the east to Heathrow Airport and Reading in the west. Until May 2018, the TfL Rail service was provided by Heathrow Connect. First, we'll be riding the Heathrow Express to Heathrow Terminal 5, which should be around a 20 minute journey. As such, and to make a fairer comparison with the TfL rail service, I'll be travelling in standard class today, as, for what is essentially such a short hop journey, the Heathrow Express is considered to be rather expensive. It is relatively easy to find the Heathrow Express services, as they have two dedicated platforms in Paddington, platforms 6 and 7, however, they can use others when necessary. Heading down to the platform, we now have a much better view of our train, which is a class 387 Electro Star unit. I'll delve into more detail about these units later, but for now, let's take a look at some more features of the platforms that are dedicated to Heathrow Express. For anyone needing to buy any last minute tickets, there's a ticket machine just before the barriers, which is pretty handy if you ask me. The Heathrow Express platforms also have much better level access between the train and the platform, as opposed to the other platforms in the station. However, this was more suited to the Class 332s, the previous trains that ran on this route. And now, it's time for us to board our train, which is a Class 387 Electrostar, as I've mentioned previously. Heathrow Express operate 12 of these trains, which replace the 14 Class 332s which have operated the route since its inception in 1998. However, this is my first time riding these trains ever since they've been introduced in late 2020, so it would be interesting to see what they're like. In a previous life, these trains operated GWR's commuter services in the Thames Valley, replacing the Class 165 and 166 turbos. However, with electrification cutbacks, the need to replace the Class 332s and GWR taking over the day-to-day -day management of the Heathrow Express, GWR selected a pool of 12 Class 387s from their own fleet to be specifically refurbished at Ilford Depot for use on the Heathrow Express service. It's now time for us to start our walkthrough of the train, starting from the business class compartment retrofitted to the fleet upon refurbishment at Ilford. Whilst this is an improvement to the standard Class 387, this is still a downgrade compared to the Class 332s, which feature the 1 plus 1 seating arrangement and much more comfortable seating. Walking into the standard Class portion of the train, which is how it is throughout the rest of the train, we can still see that the original seating was retained. However, the tables are not present as per the standard Class 387, which was a bit of a surprise, considering even the Gatwick Express units retain tables upon introduction. I have already done a review of the Gatwick Express Class 387 from when they operated with GWR for a short period, so feel free to check it out on my channel at your leisure. Approaching the end of the third carriage, we now come across the wheelchair accessible area as well as the PRM accessible toilet, as specified by PRM regulations. I'll be checking this out in more detail later on throughout the trip. Coming to the end of our four carriage train, we can see that the interconnecting gangways are in operation, allowing for flexible movement throughout the train, which is an advantage over the previous Class 332s. Well, that's enough for me. Guess it's time for me to take my seat and hit the iron road.
while traveling. And please maintain and respect social distancing wherever possible. We are now passing Royal Oak Portal, which is what links the Great Western Mainline portion of the Elizabeth Line to the central core of the Elizabeth Line, as well as the Great Eastern Mainline branch and the Abbey Wood branch, which, as mentioned previously, is expected to be operational during the first half of this year. What we are now passing is the site of the former Old Oak Common Maintenance Depot, which is where Great Western Railway and Heathrow Express previously maintained their fleets. Now, it is now a maintenance depot for Crossrail, as well as the site of the future HS2 station, which is expected to be operational around 2026. It should also be noted that the demolition of the Heathrow Express depot, as well as the Clash 332s being limited with where they can go in the Great Western Main Line, being the reasons as to why the Class 387s replaced them on the Heathrow Express. It's now time to take a look at the features of the train, starting with the cup holders, which replaced the tables that were previously fitted. Quite a nice touch if you ask me, but I prefer the tables. Whilst the display screens are mostly used for journey related information, they can also be used for adverts and promotions exclusive to Heathrow Airport, which can be seen as a good thing, however, from my perspective, I did find it rather annoying to be bombarded with every few minutes. Ilford also retrofitted the trains with plug-in USB sockets, replacing the previous plug-only sockets as built to the fleet on introduction, which is better as it provides more flexibility with charging your device. I was initially disappointed when I saw the same Fainzer seats, however, they were surprisingly more comfortable than the standard Class 387, which is expected from a premium service such as the Heathrow Express. I also noticed these Heathrow Express tags on the seats, which is quite a unique feature if you ask me. The same armrests from when the fleet was first built still remain on the train, which is good to see, as I do quite like this feature. For services heading towards Heathrow Airport, there is a dedicated destination screen displaying the arrivals and departures of certain flights within an hour or two period. On the return journey to London Paddington, this is instead shown as arrivals and departures from the railway station. As this is the non-stop Heathrow Express, we pass a large number of stations en route to the airport, Ealing Broadway being one of them, which is a major interchange between TfL Rail, the Central Line and the District Line. It should also be noted that we reach 110 miles an hour on this section of the route, being faster than the previous Class 332 and improving journey time. Shortly after, we come across West Ealing, where you can change for the Greenford branch, as well as see some Great Western Railway and Heathrow Express trains stable throughout their daily use. Approaching Hayes and Harlington, we will soon branch off from the Great Western Main Line to Airport Junction and the Heathrow Airport Tunnels. However, before we do so, it's time to check out the toilets. The standard toilet in my carriage today was unfortunately out of action, so that led to me going to the wheelchair accessible toilet in the third carriage. As is common with the Electrostar fleet, this operates using a button system, so let's lock the door and begin. There's not really much different to the standard Electrostar toilet, and everything seems to be working as well as it should soap from the tap. However, unfortunately we will need to wait for the dryer to become operational. One major flaw with these toilet designs. However, as you can see in here, it seems to be working perfectly fine, so thumbs up from me. It's also relatively a relatively clean environment, although there is some water spillage as to be expected. We are now inside the Heathrow Airport Tunnels, which, surprisingly, has amazing 4G connection. 
Some more features of the train include lights below the roof head luggage racks, which is standard with all 387s. All aisle seats feature foldable trays at the back of each seat, which I'm surprised Heathrow Express kept considering they got rid of the tables. Coat hangers are also present next to the windows, which fits my bag perfectly fine. And upon arrival into Heathrow Terminals 2 and 3, we are now coming to an end of our time with Heathrow Express. So, what did I think of my travels with Heathrow Express today? Overall, I have to admit I was quite disappointed with the new Class 387 that replaced the previous Class 332. Not because they are bad trains, it's just because the Class 332 sets such a high standard for the Heathrow Express. And, considering I paid £16.50, including rail cart discount of a third for my ticket today, the price tag was not really worth the 15 minute journey with the Class 387. Well, anyways, that's it for Heathrow Express. It's time for us to take a look around Heathrow Airport and then board TFL Rail. And welcome all to Heathrow Terminal 5. One thing I did notice about the Heathrow Express trains, and which I forgot to mention, is that each train is named after a specific city worldwide. For example, the rear unit of this 8 carriage train is named Paris, whereas the one I rode in was named Sydney. Right next to the railway station entrance, we can see lifts to the Piccadilly line for connections to West London, Central London and North London, making it a popular line for tourists. However, as we're looking at National Rail only, I'm not going to be reviewing this today. Inside the main airport complex, I thought I'd note that it's, it is relatively busy, which is good to see, not only as travel restrictions ease, but as the travel and tourism industry recovers from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, anyways, I think that's enough for now, considering that our train is about to depart very soon. So, it's time to head back to the platform and board our TFL rail service. Let's go! Since 2018, Oyster and contactless payment cards payments have been accepted on the Heathrow Express and TFL rail services. However, the Heathrow Express costs £25, whereas the TFL rail service will see in a moment. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using my Oyster card today even though it is cheaper for me to buy a single ticket. This is because I want to show how the pricing works, as well as how to use the Oyster card on the TFL rail service. Walking to the platform, we can see that our service has already arrived, and is formed of a 9 carriage Class 345 Aventure train. Built by Bombardier at their Derby Lit Church Lane Works between 2015 and 2019, the Class 345s were built specifically for usage on the Elizabeth line. However, they are now operating services branded TFL Rail in the interim whilst the route is being constructed, such as London Paddington to Heathrow Airport, as previously operated by the Class 360 Desiro units on the Heathrow Connect when launched in 2005. Owing to ETCS issues in the Heathrow tunnels faced by the Class 345s, the Class 360 Desiro soldiered on until September 2020, when they were eventually fully replaced by the Class 345s once the issues had been resolved. It should also be noted that the Class 345s operating the TFL rail service typically operate to Heathrow Terminal 4. However, owing to the closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic, services have instead been diverted into Terminal 5, offering a 6 train per hour interval combined with the Heathrow Express service. The question is though, how does the TFL rail service compare to the Heathrow Express? Let's find out! Unlike the non-stop Heathrow Express service, the TFL rail service stops at intermediate stations en route to Paddington. However, don't let this put you off, 
as the journey time is only 10 minutes slower, not to mention that it's much cheaper than the Heathrow Express service. Right, now it's time for us to do a walkthrough of our nine carriage train. So let's get on board. One major noticeable difference to the Heathrow Express is that the units feature a metro style layout, which I'm not a big fan of if I'm going to be honest. However, I am a big fan of the see-through gangways, as you can see throughout the whole length of the train, which I pretty like. Plus, in Covid times, you don't have to touch any doors. Walking into the third carriage, we can now see that some airline style seating has started to appear, which I wish there was more of to be fair, as this type of seating is much preferred, not just by myself, but also by many other passengers as you can see, as those are the types of seats that get taken up the most. Not to mention that the previous stock used on the Heathrow Connect service offered a whole array of airline style seating, and no metro style seating whatsoever. So this is kind of a downgrade from my point of view. As the layout is pretty consistent throughout the train, I've skipped on towards the end of our nine carriage train, where we can see that the front and end carriages have fully metro style seating, which again, is not something that I'm rather pleased with. Well, anyways, guess that's it for me in terms of the walkthrough. So it's time for me to take my seat and hit the iron road. So let's go. I thought I'd include Heathrow Central here again, as I bet you're wondering why Terminal 1 is not present here. Terminal 1 was closed in June 2015 to make way for the expansion of Heathrow Terminal 2, and as such, the station was renamed as appropriate. It should also be noted in the Heathrow tunnels, we can do a maximum speed of 80 miles an hour, although we're currently at 70. The train's features are rather minimal, such as the grab handles which are on the grab rails, to reflect the metro usage expected from the Elizabeth line. As with the Heathrow Express Class 387s, the Class 345s have state-of-the-art passenger information systems, which, in my opinion, state more, much more relevant information and useful information compared to the Heathrow Express Class 387s, which bombard you with useless information from my point of view. As well as the journey progress and the time, other useful features include the line status of the London Overground and London Underground services, which would have been useful on the Heathrow Express. At Airport Junction, having left the Heathrow Airport tunnels, we now rejoin the main Great Western Main Line, running into London Paddington. Not to mention, we are also close to our first stop of the journey outside the airport, Hayes and Harlington. Conducting a seat test of the airline style seats, we can see that they are rather hard, albeit comfortable, although not as comfortable as the Heathrow Express Fanes at Ironing Board seats. The exact same can be said for the metro style seating, albeit with not as high a back, making it much less comfortable in my opinion. Something else that's worth mentioning about these trains is that route maps are present above every door, showing the TFL Rail East services to Shenfield, as well as the TFL Rail West services to Reading and Heathrow, highlighting the new interchangeability between the units due to the Elizabeth Line core. We are now passing South Hall WCR shortly after leaving South Hall Station. This is where West Coast Rail store some of their heritage stock, including the legendary Flying Scotsman, as well as a Thumper, which we can see on the right. And we are now approaching Acton Mainline, 
our last stop before Paddington. I have to admit, Acton Mainline and Handwell have seen the most improvements since takeover from GWR by TFL Rail, which is good to see as it provides much needed investment to the infrastructure and rail network in the local area of West London. And approaching Royal Oak Junction, we are now coming to the end of our time with TFL Rail. So overall, which operator would I recommend to travel with to Heathrow Airport? Overall, despite the lack of features that the Class 345s have per the 387s, I mean, for newer trains they don't even have plug sockets, I would honestly recommend TFL Rail over the Heathrow Express. This is because despite this, as well as the Heathrow Express being a premium service, as well as running non-stop between Heathrow Airport and Paddington, the Class 387s used on the route are a far cry from the previous Class 332s and have overall reduced the surface quality in my opinion. Not to mention that there is only a 10 minute difference between the TFL rail service and the Heathrow Express, just that the TFL rail service stops at all stations along the route. Not to mention that my ticket for the Heathrow Express cost me more than double what it would have cost me to buy a, T a TFL rail ticket on the day, including my rail car discount of a third I could have paid £7.35. However, as I'm on an Oyster today, it costs slightly more. Even then, it was still cheaper than the Heathrow Express. Moreover, the TFL rail service is expected to become part of the Elizabeth Line later throughout the year, and as such, will provide better connections to the central London destinations compared to the Heathrow Express. Next station, Paddington, where this train terminates. And it's journey's end for this video. Welcome back to Paddington, everyone. I feel like I'm forgetting something, though, which I can't quite remember what. Oh, yeah, that's it. My Oyster card, as well as my cost for today's journey. Today's journey cost me a total of £10.40, as you can see from the barrier, which, despite being more expensive compared to buying an actual ticket, is still a lot cheaper than the Heathrow Express, saving me just over £6. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video today. If you did, please help us out by giving it a like, sharing it, as well as subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications, as I am now uploading new videos every two Fridays at 5pm. Well, that's it from me. It's time for me to catch my tube home. But in the meantime, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in two Fridays' time. Bye, guys.